Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 114 Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, and the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea behind it fled, Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled, O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. The first lesson is from the ninth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, starting at the first verse. Hear, O Israel, you are about to cross the Jordan today to go in and dispossess nations larger and mightier than you, great cities fortified to the heavens, a strong and tall people, the offspring of Anakim, whom you know, you have heard it said of them, who can stand up to the Anakim? Know then today that the Lord your God is the one who crosses over before you as a devouring fire. He will defeat them and subdue them before you, so that you may dispossess and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has promised you. When the Lord your God thrusts them out before you, do not say to yourself, Is it because of my righteousness that the Lord has brought me in to occupy this land? It is rather because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is dispossessing them before you. It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart that you are going in to occupy their land. But because of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God is dispossessing them before you in order to fulfill the promise that the Lord made on oath to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. Know then that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to occupy because of your righteousness, for you are a stubborn people. Remember, and do not forget how you provoked the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness. You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day you came out of the land of Egypt until you came to this place. Even at Horeb you provoked the Lord to wrath, and the Lord was so angry with you that he was ready to destroy you. When I went up the mountain to receive the stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord made with you, I remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. And the Lord gave me the two stone tablets written with the finger of God. On them were all the words that the Lord had spoken to you at the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly. At the end of 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord said to me, get up, go down quickly from here, for your people whom you have brought from Egypt have acted corruptly. They have been quick to turn from the way that I commanded them. They have cast an image for themselves. Furthermore, the Lord said to me, I have seen that this people is indeed a stubborn people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of you a nation mightier and more numerous than they. So I turned and went down from the mountain. 
While the mountain was ablaze, the two tablets of the covenant were in my two hands. Then I saw that you had indeed sinned against the Lord your God by casting for yourself an image of a calf. You had been quick to turn from that the Lord had commanded you. So I took hold of the two tablets and flung them from my two hands, smashing them before your eyes. Then I lay prostrate before the Lord as before, forty days and forty nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all the sin that you had committed, provoking the Lord by doing what was evil in his sight. For I was afraid that the anger the Lord bore against you was so fierce that he would destroy you. But the Lord listened to me that time also. The Lord was so angry with Aaron that he was ready to destroy him. But I interceded also on behalf of Aaron at that same time. Then I took the sinful thing that you had made, the calf, and burned it with fire and crushed it, grinding it thoroughly until it was reduced to dust. And I threw the dust of it into the stream that runs down the mountain. Here endeth the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in their imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent away empty. He remembering his mercy hath hope in his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the fourth chapter of the letter to the Ephesians, starting at the first verse. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? That he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every lig ligament with which it is equipped, as each part 
is working properly promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. Here endeth the second lesson. Lord, let, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Almighty God, who shows to them that be in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may turn into the way of righteousness, grant unto all them that are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may eschew those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in the knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us thy humble servants in all the sorts of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's come before our God, confident that he listens to us when we pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless your church, our bishops and leaders. Give them insight and wisdom to understand where the church fits into our world and how it may be relevant and accessible to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for our benefice of Colgate and Tombland, and thank you for Alaric and for everyone who participates in the life of our churches and 
this new online community. Please make us a community of disciples who are following you even although the road is not at all clear at the moment. We may not know what tomorrow holds, but you do. So please show us what being a disciple of you is for us today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray your blessing for the Queen and government. Please direct all in leadership and roles involving making decisions. Please bless people struggling with lockdown, families trying to home educate school children, parents trying to work from home, people who are suffering with mental health problems, addiction, loneliness, anxiety, or a sense of hopelessness or just feeling lost. May we all have a hope secured for us by Jesus on the cross. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the people who are working and putting themselves at risk for us. Protect them and sustain them and the people they go home to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all who are suffering or sick in any way, in hospital or at home, with physical illness or emotional, mental or spiritual illness. Be with the sick in their suffering and make your comfort and presence known to them. We pray now in a moment's silence for all those who have asked for our prayers and for all those who are on our heart that we would like to bring to the foot of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who have died and for the bereaved who are also facing bereavement with separation. Please comfort and reassure that through the sacrifice of Christ, love will prevail. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. So Lord, please go with us into the evening of this day, assured of your love and presence with us. This really is a most wonderful thought and a great source of assurance, peace and hope for us. Thank you, gracious and loving Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, Thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.